guys, it's Mandy Friedman, licensed professional clinical counselor and certified domestic violence counselor. Oh my goodness. Clinically certified domestic violence counselor and creator of our SNAP program, Survivors of Narcissistic and Abusive Personalities. I'm working from home today, as you can see, because I'm blessed and I'm someone who can work from home. There's a lot of people that can't right now. And uh, we're all thinking about you. Uh, thanks for doing all the hard work out there um, and making sure the rest of us have groceries and, and things like that. We really appreciate all your hard work. Um, today, I want to talk about gray rock. So there's a number of different um, navigational tools that we can use um, when we're dealing with toxic, abusive, manipulative, difficult personalities. Um, and some of you, I'm sure, have heard of no contact. And no contact means just like what it sounds like it means is that you don't have contact with this person at all in any way, shape, or form. Um, but sometimes we don't have a choice. Sometimes this is our boss um, or it's a parent that we're not at a point in our lives where we can't have that parent in our life anymore. We need them. Um, you know, this is someone who you're just not in the position of cutting them out of your life completely, um, or perhaps they will, uh, you only come in contact with them briefly here and there. Um, so for example, maybe, you know, you're in a good pattern with an ex-spouse when you, uh, you know, you're now in the swing of things with the sh shared parenting plans and such. And so maybe now you only have, you know, a little bit of contact with them from time to time just in relationship to the kids. You know, it's that kind of thing where you're managing it, um, doing the best you can, but you're not in a position of just you no know, contact. So we have to get creative, um, you know, when this is a circumstance. Uh, you can't sometimes quit your job when you have a toxic work environment or work with toxic people. Um, you can't take another class if that professor, you know, is the only one that teaches the class that is required for you. I mean, sometimes we just don't have a choice. Or maybe you're a kid um, and kids don't have a lot, of, a lot of options sometimes in terms of who they have to be around. So gray rock is something that we can use um, that helps us protect our emotional vulnerable self. Um, and it's really important that we use this tactic correctly um, because if we don't use it correctly, then we, it's kind of pointless to even use it. But, you know, you will have to practice with it and get better because it feels a little weird at first, especially for empathic people. Empathic people, we really like to operate from a position of emotional connectedness. And uh, we like to feel that like, uh, getting to know you feeling. Um, we like to express ourselves clearly. Um, we, we don't mind sharing personal things if it means that we're going to be, you know, connecting with someone or gaining a shared understanding. So, you know, we're used to just sort of laying it all out there. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with manipulative uh, or abusive people, they are strategic. You know, they use strategy and they use um, sometimes more logic even than we do. Um, they always have a reason for the things that they do, whereas we're much more sort of pure in our interactions a lot of times. And we, we're not trying to be strategic. And furthermore, we think that there's something wrong with being strategic. We kind of, you know, we don't like that. Um, we don't like to know that other people do it, and we don't want to do it ourselves. We feel like it's a failure on our part, or perhaps like that we're becoming like them. Um, we don't want to be manipulative, right? And we don't want to be dishonest. And so um, what I'm telling you to do in terms of gray rock isn't about dishonesty or being duplicitous or being manipulative. It's about survival, <laughs> It's about survival. You're trying to survive your circumstances without having your soul crushed 10 times a day. You're trying to survive your circumstances without having knocked down, drag out fights five times a day. Uh, you're trying to manage your circumstances, manage your situation with the least amount of conflict possible. And you didn't ask for that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 
you didn't choose to be here having to do these sorts of things. So the fact that you need to be strategic isn't because you naturally are, you know, it's because you've been put in a position of needing to use strategy. Um, so try if you can, as I'm describing this, and as you picture yourself doing it, you know, one of the things that I, a common thing that I hear from people is, oh, but th that sounds like that I'm not being honest, or that sounds like I'm being manipulative, um, or, you know, doesn't that make me just like them if I'm doing those things? And, you know, the truth of the matter is, no, you're not like them at all. You're just trying to deal with them, manage the situation and avoid being hurt and avoid being used. Um, you know, as empaths, we can't walk around with our hearts on our sleeves all the time. We just can't. And, and it winds up harming us, you know, and it doesn't mean that we're going to change our empathic nature. It just means we have to learn some strategies and tools to protect ourselves so that we can continue to be empathic. Okay. So that's what we're doing here. I want to stay my soft, vulnerable self. I want to be my empathic self. I don't want to change that. So in order to keep it, I have to protect it. Okay. So if you want to stay empathic and be your nice, loving, caring, nurturing self, and you don't want that to go away, then you're going to have to start doing these sorts of things. Um, so gray rock is not doing anything wrong and you're not manipulating anyone. You're surviving. Okay. Just to be clear about that, uh, gray rock, uh, my definition of gray rock, but I didn't invent this, by the way, if you want to Google it um, or go on, YouTube, go on YouTube, you'll see all kinds of videos about gray rock. Um, so there's lots of different um, explanations out there. Um, and uh, I, I can't remember the lady that first, uh, there, someone invented it. Um, and I spoke about it in a webinar um, on lovefraud.com not too long ago and did a little report on where gray rock came from. Uh, but anyway, so you, you've heard of no contact. So no contact means just that we're no contact. You don't look at pictures. You don't answer texts. I mean, nothing. And sometimes you have to cut out their family and friends too. Um, but gray rock is benign and neutral. Benign and neutral. Um, that's why it's called gray rock. A gray rock just blends in. Nobody even notices it. You just keep right on walking. It's not shiny. It's not sparkly. It's not a bright color. It is gray and boring and it just blends right in. And that's what you want to do. You want to be gray and boring. Gray rock. Uh, this is a way of flying under the radar, going stealth mode. And the purpose of it is to avoid conflict, right? And it's also geared uh, toward limiting the transfer of information because remember, manipulative and abusive people weaponize information. So um, when you realize that, that when you're just having a regular old conversation about, you know, to you, like what you like, don't like, boundaries, things like that, Manipulative people are filing that away into their arsenal and it's going to be weaponized and used later. So gray rock helps us stop that from happening. Um, gray rock also will keep us more in our prefrontal cortex and less in our amygdala uh, during these interactions. And that's, that's like, you know, a bonus because um, you've heard me talk about this before. Empathic people, we tend to... Um, be driven by our emotions and our, you know, we have, we have like feelings about things. Um, and when we're dealing with manipulative and abusive people, our amygdala is, is responding and we might be getting some uh oh feelings or nervous feelings, jittery feelings. And now we're, or we might be angry, right. Or feel threatened. Now we're not thinking clearly, right. That's just how your brain works. Um, but when you're using gray rock and when you're using navigation strategies, it forces you to take a second, that plan pause before you respond to something. And then you're now moving uh, the energy more towards that logical part of your brain. Uh, so when we use strategy, it helps us solve that amygdala problem. Um, so I want to give you some um, examples of gray rock, but first I'm going to say like, you know, who would you be using this with? Bullies, um, abusers, maybe you just have an asshole of a sibling that loves giving you a hard time all the time. Um, maybe even a teacher that likes to pick on you. You know, I, I, I don't even like to say that because I don't believe that 
that goes on as much as people say, but I have had some terrible teachers <laughs> and some terrible professors that really were, you know, not nice people. Um, seemed like they had a little sadistic pleasure of having power over others. And, you know, when you try to confront those types and engage them, um, you know, it doesn't go well all the time. So if you're under the thumb of someone who just gets a little joy out of screwing with people or getting, getting a rise out of people, you know, this is who you're going to use this with. It's basically someone who's trying to poke you to get a response and you're just not going to. So the first, you know, example I would think of is bullies. I got bullied. Oh goodness. A hmm. few years of my life. I'm a redhead and some other things, but, <laughs> um, my mom used to tell me, um, don't let them upset you or don't let, don't let them see you upset that that's what they want. And that if you get all upset, then that's entertaining them and then they'll just do it more. And so I found myself learning how to sort of look through people and not focus on their behavior and not internalize their behavior as a, as a strategy for dealing with bullies as a kid. But really what that was is it was Grey Rock. Mom taught me Grey Rock. Didn't know she was teaching me Grey Rock, but that's, that's what it was. Um, and, and so what you're going to do in a Grey Rock situation is, um, let's see, let's, let's see. Um, actually, I think I, ha I can screen share this possibly. I don't know. Well, maybe not. Mm, I guess I have to do the screen share before before I start. Anyhow, there's a nice cartoon. Maybe I'll post it um, on Facebook after this. But so if someone's picking or poking on you, um, let's see. Let's, let's, let's do an example of an abusive ex and it is about, um, oh, I know. How about this current situation that we're in? This is going on a lot. All right. So people that share kids right now, um, in this climate of um, social distancing, it's gotten real complicated for some people. Um, and it's up the ante on manipulation. So now people are accusing each other of not caring about their children uh, and using the kids as pawns to create more conflict. So let's say your ex-partner or the father or, or, your, or the, you know, the mother of your kids is like, um, you know, uh, I told you that the kid had a cough and, you know, you decided to, um, to take him to daycare anyhow, and I'm going to take you to court, um, because, you know, you, you're not following the social distancing and, um, you know, so on and so forth. And you're like, well, I don't have your child support checks and I still have to work. Um, you're living in a halfway house, uh, not sure, you know, what it is that you want me to be doing. So in other words, this person is being unreasonable. They're bullying you. They're trying to get a reaction. They're accusing you of things. And your normal response would be like, what the are you talking about? You know, how dare you? Basically, I'm working my butt off over here taking care of these kids and I'm keeping them safe while you're out doing such and such and such and such because we always know it's a hip hypocritical accusation, right? Every time. Okay, so, so instead of reacting, we insert a planned pause and so we're, we're letting it pass through us. Uh, like we're like we're a window, right? So the negativity or the manipulation is coming at us, but instead of internalizing it and hanging on to it, it's gonna pass. <laughs> I just hit my headphone. It's gonna pass through us like a window, and we're not gonna hang on to it. Um, and then what we're gonna do is think for a second and get that, the, those thought patterns going in the prefrontal cortex. And what is the response that I want to have? Okay, and the response could be something like you know what, that's a really great point. Um, I'm going to see about working less hours so that I don't need the daycare. Um, and I'll look into it. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh-huh. I, I can definitely do better. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. You know, you just sort of, you let, you let it pass through you and you deal with it in a very sort of neutral and benign way. You're not, you're not, um, accepting mistreatment 
It's just you're not engaging in conflict no matter what. So when they poke at you, you do this sort of like mental Aikido where you take a second and think, and then your response is going to be a benign and neutral response. You're so greedy. All you want is money. You know, I send you these checks and, um, you know, I see that I see what you're spending it on with your new boyfriend, you know, must be nice <laughs> with all my, all my child support money that you're spending. Like, huh? Wow. Well, I thought I was spending my money in a wise way, but maybe I'll talk to our accountant about that and I'll make sure that I am being thrifty and wise with my money. Thank you so much for pointing that out. You know, you just, you don't rise to the occasion. You don't defend yourself. You don't give excuses or explanations. You just sort of accept it. It passes through you and then you sort of hand it back to them. You know, like I hear what you're saying and also thank you for the information, you know, and then what sometimes they'll feel is sort of like, yeah, she, you know, she heard me. Um, and you know, another way that you can do gray rock is when there's like texting battles going on, don't take the bait and get sarcastic and shitty, you know, just stay fact based, um, as best that you can, um, and give little, as little information as possible. So, um, for example, you know, how come you're not gonna, uh, you know, how come you you can't get them to me until such and such a time? You know, you know what's so important that you can't be here sooner? Da 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 da. Um, and so what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to fight with them, and they want to extract some information, right? So like, who are you spending your time with? Where are you going? Um, how important is that person in your life? Um, so by by sort of uh, attacking you and getting a rise out of you, they're learning about what's you know, what's going on with you. Um, so let's say, you know, how, you know, how come you, you know, you can't be there till such and such a time. Where are you going to be? Who are you going to be with? I can't be there until four o'clock. I'm happy to see you at four. Well, who are you going to be with? And you know, how come you can't be there until four? I'm available at four. Are you available at four? Well, I just said I was available at four. I just, you know what? Forget about it. You know, forget about it. If, you, if whatever you're doing before this is more important, then just forget about it. Okay, I'll see you at four then. You know, you just, you don't, you just stick to your talking points over and over and over and don't budge from them. And then they get bored and then they'll go away. They'll get, get irritated at first. They might get a little angry. You know, like I said, this takes practice. You got to do it over and over again. But basically it's like you're, you're trying not to feed that stray cat. You know, because once you give them a little bit, they just keep coming back for more. Um, and, and bullies, manipulators, abusers, they see other people as toys or objects to play with or use. And when you've taken their toy away, you know, that's what gray rock and no contact uh, accomplishes is that you're taking their toys away. You're not feeding them with emotion. And you're not feeding them with attention because those are the two things that they feed on emotion and attention, whether it's negative or positive. So when, when that person is trying to get a rise out of me, I'm not going to give that to them. And instead I'm going to let that negative uh, accusation pass through me. And then I'm going to say, I hear you. And that's basically it. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I will consider what you have said. Have a great day. Um, anyway, if you have some better examples of gray rock, why don't you message me um, with your stories of, of how gray rock has worked for you? Um, has it been effective? Do you have um, a particular incident that you'd like to share? Uh, and like I always do, let me um, just make sure that I hit all my points here. So you're not going to rise to defend yourself when they say, say something mean. There's going to be a smear campaign anyway, you know, and, and we don't want them in our lives. So we don't really care what they think. I mean, it takes a while to get there, but ultimately that's where we want to be is, um, uh, is apathy. You know, I, I just don't even care about this person. Um, and then, you know, you're being in, you're in stealth mode, you're flying under the radar, but here's another thing. You're not fawning. Remember we talked about fawning 
uh, as as part of their your uh, trauma response from the amygdala. You got fight, flight, uh, freeze, and fawn. Fawning is like, oh, it's okay. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I'm so sorry that that happened. And can I get you something? Would you like me to make you a drink? You know, that's fawning. That's not what we're doing. This isn't fawning um, because this is not a trauma response. This isn't something that we do instinctively. Fawning, freezing, fighting, right? Uh, those are going to be instinctive responses that happen and you're not even aware that you're doing it. This is something that's coming from your prefrontal cortex. So you're very much aware that you're engaged in this strategy. Um, you're not being duplicitous or manipulative. You didn't want to be here. Remember you're here having to cope with your situation. Um, and don't tell them that you're using gray rock, please, for the love of God. Um, so many times in the heat of the moment, you know, people that are still engaged with narcissists, they get some information and then they use it in an argument with the narcissist thinking that's going to give them an upper hand or something. It never does. Zero. Zero percent of the time is that effective. Now all you've done is outed yourself and given them more information. Now they're going to go and they're going to um, investigate and look up and learn about gray rock and they're going to weaponize it and they're going to use it against you. Um, if you tell them they're a narcissist, now you're the narcissist, okay? So do not disclose and say what strategies you're using and thinking that's somehow going to give you the upper hand. It doesn't. Um, it takes your power away, actually. Um, and, okay, so this one's kind of, and this will be the last thing that I say, but um, for a lot of people who have been abused, um, in those moments of abuse, we dissociate. and. Um, for a lot of us who've been abused, if you remember some of those really bad moments, you went somewhere in your head, you know, um, and I don't know about you, but I remember having sort of the thought of you can't hurt me because I'm not here. So if any of you have ever had that experience where you decided that you couldn't endure that pain and you had to shut down on the inside. Hold on a second. What the heck? Well, son of a biscuit. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's coming through my headphone. Anyway, so you can't hurt me because I'm not here. What I mean by that is just that you're going to leave your vulnerable emotional self somewhere else. Gray rock is kind of like that. It's like my body's here. I'm nodding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, I'm hearing you. Um, but I'm not really here. My emotional vulnerable self isn't really here. I'm not engaging with this person on that level. Um, I'm just here to deliver information um, and receive information. And that is all. So you can't hurt me because I'm not here. Uh, so that's another way to conceptualize uh, the tactic and technique of using gray rock with